Hey guys, it's Lisa, and I realized that I forgot um, to add a couple of things to my cost of RV living video, and I just wanted to add those things quickly um, because they matter. And one of the things I thought about after I made that video was mail. Mail is not free. Um, so I do know, I take that back though, because when we were at one of our campgrounds, um, the family next to us did get their mail at the office, but they are not doing that during the winter because the office isn't open. So I don't know what they're doing now, but we have always had, um, a box at a mail place. Now you, there are various places that can do this. There are some places if you just type, if you just Google like RV mail places, I think it will come up because I think that's what we did. And a couple of them are actually kind of made for RVers and they will forward your stuff to you for a fee and some of them will take pictures of your stuff for you. Uh, what we ended up doing because we don't travel uh, a lot, we stay in the same place eight months out of the year and then we change places um, a couple of months the, the other four so we were able to just get a P.O. box and um, but it's not a real P.O. box because we didn't want a P.O. box because Amazon won't ship to a P.O. box or at least they didn't used to so we wanted a regular like mail place with an address so we go to one of those places that like has an address and so we can get all of our packages and stuff shipped there they will forward our stuff also it's a small additional fee but it's not huge we've had to do that like we did that last summer uh, when we were starting some school stuff and we had uh, some stuff shipped here and we ended up having it for, uh, forwarded to Wisconsin and it was not a huge fee um, but that's what we do and ours costs um, $11 a month I want to say one of the ones we looked at cost $30 a month but that was one where they did where you were just they made the assumption that it would be forwarded to you so $11 a month but you pay it um, every six months so um, so every six months I guess you're paying $66 if I'm doing my math correctly and um, so um, so it adds up. I mean, it really does add up when you add in the other things. And I definitely wanted to include how we do our mail and how much it costs. And um, I think we're definitely on the lower limit, though. So it can cost a little more than that if you need more services. Um, the other thing that I wanted to cover was the cost of pulling our RV. So when we pull our fifth wheel, our fifth wheel is an odd size. It's like 41.3 feet or something. It's not 41 feet. It's not 42 feet. It's like 41 point something. So um, anyway, uh, we you, we have an F450, which I mentioned in the previous video. We have an F450 that we pull our, uh, our RV with, and it's a diesel. And seriously, I would say on average we get about 10 miles a gallon. So it is a gas guzzler. So when we're pulling, so I mean, if you just do the math, and the, I won't tell you what exactly it costs because the cost of gas is totally different. When gas was down below $2, it was pretty awesome. But now that it's back, at least in Colorado, it's up over $2 again. I think it's like 260 or something right now. Um, so when we're towing and we're paying 260 a gallon, and we're only getting 10 miles a gallon, that really adds up. And that is one of the reasons we really like to um, just travel in our minivan because sometimes it is actually more cost effective to get a hotel um, if we're gonna do traveling. So that is a cost. And then I just wanted one additional cost that is not, I really can't put a, I can't put a number on it. I can't put a cost on it. I mean, I can't put an exact cost, but it is something to consider. And that is, a lot of specialty items not specialty items like I mean like super special like you can't find them places but a lot of things like we've invested in a lot of things like um, like hooks and stuff to hang on the walls and um, our mattresses that go on our bunk beds those are not actual twins they're smaller than a twin so we ended up getting a um, what do you call those a memory foam a memory foam mattress and then cutting that into mattresses for their beds and all of those little tiny expenses like a hundred dollars for a memory foam mattress and uh, I think we paid three dollars for each bar that we hung on the wall so that we could hang our pots and pans from them and I think we paid like a dollar each for these little other little containers that we have hanging off of those and just various things like that that for storage 
that adds up. Now, I don't think it's probably more than you would. Well, it probably is a little more because normal houses like come with that kind of stuff. Um, or it's not really as hard to find. Uh, we have really kept Ikea in business. But it is a little expense that kind of adds up. We have a little, like, we have little hooks for our coffee cups and water bottles. And just everything kind of needs to be anchored down. And so, like, the little specialty items do add up. Because I would say probably each month we do add, um, we do add in um, just one or two things. And this I was not going to include, but I just thought of it. And that is RV repairs. Once our RV was off of, uh, once the warranty was up, um, so when we first had, when we first started um, RVing, we had all of our warranty work done at the end of the warranty period. Because even though we bought this used, it was still under warranty. So we had all of that done when it was still under warranty. But since then, we have had two, um, I'm sure there's a better word for it than doomahickey, but the doomahickey things that pull your slide in and out, they're, um, what are they? They're motors. They pull your slides in and out. They have a name and I can't for life me remember it, but we have had to replace two of those in our slides. Uh, so my husband was able to do that. So it was, uh, so that made it cheaper, but we still had to buy the part and I want to say it was $150, but um, yeah, don't quote me on that because I don't know. And, um, and then we had to have a furnace repair and that was something we couldn't do because it was something to do with the, um, uh, sorry, I had to move the phone around because my hands, I have pregnancy carpal tunnel and they were getting really sore. Um, anyway, I, uh, so the other thing we had a furnace repair and it was an electrical thing. So we had to have someone come out and do it. It was something we couldn't do ourselves. And that was $175. And I would say probably on average, if you average our large repairs and our small repairs, we pay anywhere from like, if you just kind of averaged them out, added everything that we do and you, um, and you divided it by 12, I would say we pay anywhere from 25 to $50 a month in repairs. Um, I'm pretty sure we paid that in our other house too. Right before we moved out of our other house, we replaced the hot water heater. And then when we had renters in there, um, we had to replace the dishwasher because it broke and it warped all the hardwood floors. So we had to replace the hardwood floors. So I'm not saying that it's more than that, but it is something to consider. It's not necessarily as free and clear. I think my husband and I initially looked at it as kind of a little bit more of a money maker than it has been. Um, so I just want to be honest about that. So anyway, I hope this helps and I'll try to keep it short today under eight minutes. So love you guys. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.